What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And we're going to talk about violence in El Salvador and negotiations with the Bukele government and other good stuff, right? So stay tuned. And some of this stuff is going to open up the door to future content I'll be doing uh, centered around gangs in El Salvador and Central America. So the first thing to kind of realize and understand is it is necessary for the government to work with gangs, right? Because gangs control the homicide rate and homicide rates control political uh, power, right? The people in El Salvador predominantly are concerned with safety and Congress, you know, corruption, right? And so when bodies are dropping, they lose confidence in the administration. They, Mara knows this, both segments of Barrio 18 know this. Now in the past, in, in the previous administrations, uh, when those uh, uh, negotiations fell apart, which I talked about a little bit in my in my 503 video, right, that I'll link to. But they will go after the government, security officials, the military, that kind of stuff. They don't really do that anymore, right? And they don't really launch large extended battles, you know what I mean, with, with the government. If you notice these last couple of years, and we're going to go over some of these incidents and what the payoff was, it's a couple of days with radical violence of civilians, and then it stops. It starts just as fast as it stops. And that's the gangs making clear that we control this, right? And it brings the government to the negotiating table or lets them know that, hey, what we negotiated, you're not coming through with or whatever. So it has always been that, that this happens. Bukele has always said he doesn't negotiate with gangs, this and that. More and more information is coming out in, in the press in El Salvador and Central America that, that that's nonsense, right? It's, it's just flat out not true. And it just doesn't make sense. Um, his negotiating with the gangs is what got him to become mayor of San Salvador, right? From 2015 to 2018. It's what allowed him to revitalize that downtown. And, and bring some energy to, to the environment. The gangs allowed him to do that, right? And the people loved it and he became even more popular, right? Um, so, and then he becomes president, right? But he was negotiating with those fools back then. So fast forward a little bit, March 30th, 2020, MS-13 is on this media blitz of how they're supporting Bukele and, and the restrictions and the sanitation stuff around the virus, right? We'll just call it the virus. Um, and, and they were enforcing what Bukele was, was putting out there. They supported it. But in those videos, they were showing themselves like smashing folks and torturing folks for, for not doing what they were supposed to. And, and that was kind of extreme. Barrio 18, both segments, right? Was like, hey, uh, because Barrio 18 is divided, right? You got the Barrio 18 revolutionaries and the Barrio 18 Surings. Um, That's another video. But so uh, they were like passing out goods and stuff, you know, so they showed their support, but in a little bit different way. And they distanced themselves from how Mara was getting down, right? So April 17, 2020, El Salvador closes down the country, right? Around that time, closes down the country. Ain't nothing happening, right? Because of the virus. Less than 10 days later, April 24th to April 27th, 7th, I believe, there's 76 people killed in five days, right? And, and indiscriminately, right? They're, they're civilians. And there's a couple of reasons for this. The minor reason is the Barrio 18 revolutionaries were pissed off that the, one of their leaders, Pablo Ivan Mercado Aguilar, aka Spanky or Snarf, had gotten snatched up. And so they weren't happy about that, right? Because we're supposed to be working together here. But in large part, it was MS-13. People were dying in MS-13 territory. And the thing MS was mad about is with the country being shut down, then the government turned to like police to, to patrol areas. Well, those cops were getting heavy handed. They were being violent with MS members and with their family members and this and that. MS is like, hold on, bro. You can't do that, right? And also MS was like, hey, there's all this attention on the virus, but don't forget we're here and we run this, you know? And, and so we, our voice still matters and, and we're gonna be a factor. 
and they were stressing in part on economics, it's very difficult to extort people who don't have jobs or who can't work, who can't sell their stuff in the market anymore because there is no market because nobody can go outside, right? And so they were losing money. And in some areas, they weren't even attempting to collect it. Um, but it's funny, I, I read some stuff, not funny, but I, I had heard, uh, uh, you know, through other people, some people that, that you know, drove taxis and, and buses and stuff, and they were like, hey, we still kept the quota that we owe. We put that to the side because at some point they're going to want their back pay, right? And so it's a part of doing business in El Salvador. So anyway, April 27, 2020, right? There's photos from the Bukele government and they're like, hey, we're stepping away, right? Because this is the response to the violence, right? We're stepping away from integrating these, these rival gang members, which is something that had happened during the previous uh, uh, you know, peace stuff. And again, some of that's covered in the 503 video. Um, and so they said, hey, we're gonna put them all together. And they released a picture showing all these dudes with 18 tattoos and MS tattoos, and they're all huddled up next to each other on their knees or whatever, damn near naked. Most of them don't got masks. The international community is like, oh my God, they're gonna get the virus. Bukele is like, nah, bro, I'm a savage and I ain't dealing with these fools no more. Okay, the truth is they were already in negotiations. That was a staged photograph, right? Um, that, that was meant to make Bukele look good. But they were already talking to MS and 18 about Nueva Ideas, Nueva Ideas, um, Bukele's political party, having exclusive access to gang control territory in the run up to the 2021 election, right? 2021 election comes, boom, super majority, Bukele's party is, is, is in a lot of control, right? He's a very authoritarian dude too, um, but, but that's another story. And so, and, but the people ain't tripping, right? The people aren't necessarily tripping because they hate their Congress. They hate their legislator. They view them all as corrupt and they are looking for the hero, the president who's going to come and fix it. And Bukele is that guy, right? So July 2020, under Trump, they, uh, you know, the U.S. designates MS-13 as a terrorist organization. And, and a little bit before that, they had created this multinational joint task force called Volton, right? Volton or Vulcan. Anyways, Armando Ilu Melgar Diaz, a.k.a. Blue, was the first person indicted, right? The first Mara person indicted. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, more about him in a minute. January 2021, El Diablito and his 13 disciples, again, referencing a past video, the 503 one, they were all indicted as well. And, and I'll run off who they are and, and talk about them in, in a minute because the whole extradition thing got real interesting and played a role in some of the violence. And so, you know, April 2021, by then the, the you know, gang members are not separated, um, uh, you know, all that good stuff, right? I think that was actually April 2020. Nonetheless, um, so May 2021 or, or around 2021, Nueva Ideas gets their supermajority. And then in August, that's right, in August of 2021, Osiris Luna, the head of the prison system, who's a very controversial and corrupt figure, um, shoots out a memo saying that they're not mixing gang members anymore. But part of that negotiation was they were also supposed to repeal some gang laws, some harsh gang laws. Those laws didn't get repealed, right? And, and the gangs don't forget what the negotiations are. So September 2021, right? This dude, Blue, who was indicted. So when he was indicted, um, he was already in El Salvador, right? He had been in El Salvador and been locked up since 2016. That's when he last got deported from the U.S., right? Supposedly around 2017, he becomes the, the leader of, of Mara in the East Coast program. And he's doing multinational deals with, with Guatemala and El Salvador and Honduras and Mex and the U.S. and all this. According to the U.S. government, this dude is everything, right? Um, I won't get into the, the truth or fiction of, of some of those allegations. Again, maybe that's another video. 
But in 2021, he gets exonerated of his state charges, right? Conspiracy to murder, extortion, blah, blah, blah. And they let him out of jail, right? Uh, Interpol arrests him as he gets out of jail with the help of the United States and, and they lock him back up, right? Because he's awaiting extradition to the US for those terrorism charges. Fast forward a little bit, November, 2021, right? 46 people are killed within 72 hours, right? Guess what happens eight days later? <laughs> Again, violence starts, violence stops. A, a, a short period of time and a whole lot of deaths. So what happens after that is eight days later, this dude crook, Elmer Canales Rivera, right? Leader of the Hollywood Locos, he walks out of jail. He walks out of jail in El Salvador, right? And, and just see you later. He's one of the people that was up for extradition to the US. At the same time, blues people, right? Um, are appealing to their Supreme Court in El Salvador like, hey, this dude's not getting uh, extradited, flat out. He ain't fucking leaving the country, right? The US is like, hey, what's up? They're, you're supposed to shoot him to us so we can prosecute him. El Salvador's like, eh, maybe not gonna happen, right? So they got all pissed off. The US has a history of not supporting any type of truce or negotiations or anything else with gangs in El Salvador. They have sabotaged peace agreements in the past and then turned around and said, oh, Mara stole $600,000 from us, right? Um, and, and it's a propaganda game, but the US is, is dirty in, in a lot of this, right? So the one in March, which I did a video on earlier, March 24th to 27th, 2022, 87 civilians are killed. It's interesting because that specific number then brings the homicide rate to 21 more people killed in that period of time compared to 2021, right? Um, and, and again, Bukele runs on the idea of it's because of him that violence is down. It's because of him that murders are down. It's because of his policies and his government and his police and his laws. That's why this happens. It's not because of gangs. He's getting rid of gangs. He's castrating gangs, right? He's taking their power. And yet with the snap of a finger, dozens of people are dead all over the street, right? And then with the snap of a finger, homicide rates go away again. So he's full of shit, right? Um, so he, you know, he takes emergency power, right? All this other stuff. So all these little spots of violence is... Predominantly MS, but I don't want to leave 18th Street out the picture, right? Or Barrio 18, Spencer, out the picture. Um, but Mara has a, MS-13 has a stronger influence there, you know? That's them letting the government know, hey, fool, you ain't living up to the end of the bargain. So Bukele did not rescind those laws that he had agreed to rescind like a year ago. He still hasn't pulled those off the books. He hasn't played his role. He hasn't done what the gangs want him to. Now, the exact negotiations that have come out of this March 22 thing is somewhat unclear. Um, there, there's a couple floating ideas. One is to uh, further influence nobody getting extradited to the US, right? There's four of those members that had extradition requests by the US already that were released from custody in El Salvador and not handed over to the US between July 2021 and February 2022, right? Uh, Crook, the the Dua Hollywood Locos, Eduardo Arrazo Nolasco, aka Colocho, Efren Cortez, aka Tigre, and Hugo Armando Quinteros Mineros, aka Flaco, right? So all those, those four dudes was indicted and supposed to come back to the US and El Salvador has been like, nah, man, we're good, right? Um, and Blue is basically there too. And these dudes are not released because they've served their time. Some of these dudes got 40, 60 years still on their time and they're cut loose, right? Or they go back on appeal and their charges are dropped or whatever the case. So it's, it's fancy paperwork in the court system that's getting them to not um, be accountable to the United States, right? And the official position by some is it's because the U.S. will not guarantee that 
these individuals will not receive a life sentence, right? And El Salvador doesn't, doesn't believe in life sentences. Much of the international community actually doesn't give people life sentences for stuff. Um, the U.S. Is, is one of the few developed, so to speak, uh, uh, places that does. The death penalty is even more extreme. Um, and so they want assurances from the U.S. government that those things aren't going to happen. And of course, the U.S. government is not going to assure anything. But the U.S. government controls money and everything else. So they're thinking they can push El Salvador. El Salvador is like, nah, fool, because you got money and resources, but we got these dudes that are going to drop 100 people in the street in a matter of a couple of days if they're pissed off. And, and that takes us out of power, right? So it is this complicated negotiation. It's very tragic for the residents of El Salvador. I, I don't want to dismiss them as just pawns in a chess game. Right. These are real lives. These are real bodies in the streets. These are real families terrorized. Um, you know, so so the consequences are huge and it is not fair. It is not just it is not rational um, for the residents of El Salvador to have to deal with these conditions. Um, I, and I don't have the solution on how that's fixed. If I did, it'd be a wonderful country and, and I'd probably be a millionaire. Um, but I do have some ideas. I do have other stuff about El Salvador. If there's particular things that you want to know about MS, MS-13, Barrio 18th Street, the revolutionaries, the Sureños, uh, conditions in El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, I don't do a lot of MS stuff as it relates to the U.S. I, I feel like that gets covered uh, uh, anyways. And my interest, honestly, is, is more in the Central American activities and, and in my work doing a hundred plus immigration cases involving asylum seekers or those that are being deported because of gang allegations um, from the Northern Triangle, uh, Mex as well, you know, but, um, but from the Northern Triangle, it, it, that's what's kind of got me going and, and, and put me in touch with some people and, and, um, and, and really kind of piqued my interest, man. And so, Help others move in excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. Help your community because they need you. And yeah, drop a comment, man, and let me know what you think. I, I know a lot of you guys have extensive knowledge of El Salvador, so feel free to come and critique me, right, and, and, and challenge me. I do my best to present accurate information. Some of this stuff is opinion, right? The, the other thought, Spencer, one last time, is um, maybe it's some rank and file dudes within MS, that are kind of giving some of their national ramfla, their leadership, a little bit of a taste of their own medicine maybe in, in these more recent killings in March, because it's always been an issue. And again, go to the 503 video if you haven't seen it. Um, but it's always been an issue that in these negotiations with, between gangs and, and politicians, the leaders of those gangs come out well. The average Joe Blow on the street that's rocking with their, you know, with their barrio, so to speak, they don't get those benefits, you know, and and much like the case with the NF and Norteños, right? Like the NF gets a lot of benefits. Northerners don't really get benefits. So people kind of like, hey, but why are you going to tax me when you, you know, and on a, on a scale that happens in El Salvador, too. And so it could be. Partly, the the lower level folks saying, "Hey, fool, I'm, what about us?" Right, and and getting their national folks' attention. That is a thought. I, I don't have anything to back that up. It's just a thought. I'm not the only one with that thought, but I'm not saying that that is what's happening. I'm I'm just saying it's it's a thought. So, anyways, like I said, help others move with excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. Help your community. Tap in. And uh, check out the other content, man. There's all kinds of stuff.